Shalom Church, welcome back to Chosen Treasure. My name is Benjamin Daniel. I pray and hope that you've had a blessed weekend in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thanks a lot for tuning into my channel this day. And I am going to do part two. And if you haven't seen part one, I would please suggest that you go back and watch my previous video. Part two of the Rose Book of Bible Charts, Maps, and Timelines. So we are going to be getting into part two. The last page I went to in uh, part one was the statue in the book of Daniel. So as I mentioned before, this book is pretty big, not just in terms of size, but lots of pages over here. And there's a lot to cover. So that's why I'm doing part two. So let's get into it this day. Fine. So as we continue the Old Testament in the Rose Book, of Bible charts, maps, and timelines. We already see in the book of Daniel, and it continues into the next page where it talks about each segment of the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel's interpretation of that dream. So it starts with uh, the Babylonian Empire, Medo Persian, which eventually became the Persian, the Greek, and the Roman Empire. And we come to the end times empire over here, which will be a mix of clay and iron fine so again different interpretations and i'm not going to get into that today then we come to um, the statue and the visions of the beast i just want to get a good angle over here the dream daniel's vision and the kingdoms everything is listed out over here in this book it talks about and the end the hand the not by human hands, the stone which is cut out, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, which in the end is the everlasting kingdom of God. So we got the four kingdoms and the one that's divided, and the last kingdom will be the everlasting kingdom of God. So we're done with the Old Testament, and now it comes to the New Testament. There's quite a lot over here, and it starts with the Gospel of Luke, goes into the genealogy of Jesus, into the Gospel of Matthew, all the way from Abraham to Jesus, and also Luke's genealogy from Jesus to Adam. So it's like going backwards, but in a way, starting from Adam, ending up at Jesus. And this has an amazing pull-out shot. Okay, let me try to get an angle of this over here. Because I said this book is pretty big in terms of size and dimension. So this is the genealogy of Jesus. I want to be careful so I don't rip this up. It is... <laughs> It is a little bit overwhelming, so I would suggest that you stick to the one that's over here. You don't have to get into it completely unless you're doing a theological kind of course or a discourse on it or for Bible study time. But this chart is amazing. I guess you can reproduce this chart as the book said, and I mentioned this in part one, that you can reproduce it 300 times over and um, every page is reproducible. This chart is reprodu reproducible, this fold-out chart over here. And it goes to the back of it, right there. It ends at Jesus. So basically, it starts, let me get this again. Starts, whoops, starts right there from Adam. Hope you can see that right there from Adam and goes all the way to Jesus at the end of it. That's, that's the end game. The Lord Jesus is the end game. He's the last Adam, the perfect one. Praise God for that. So we come to the hundred prophecies fulfilled by Jesus. We look at the prophecy B, for example, be an offspring of the woman, shall bruise the serpent's head, Genesis. A lot of people think that prophecy started in the New Testament days. No, the, pro the first prophecy that we received, uh, not just as Christians, but as a church, but as believers, as servants of the Most High Living God, was in Genesis chapter 3. And the Old Testament reference, and we come to the New Testament reference. So what Rose Publishing have done has given this little breakdown. Prophecy, reference in the Old Testament, and the New Testament fulfillment. So it's not just somebody saying something, but it's fulfilled. Remember, every prophecy that comes from the Lord God Almighty it will always be fulfilled. And there's a lot more that still has to come. So 100 prophecies fulfilled by Jesus. A lot of people say that, Oh, it never happened, blah, blah, blah. You know, don't argue with such people. Stick to the Word of God and always have Scripture references and say, yes, it happened. That's it. It's done. The New Testament says it's fulfilled. The Word of God says it's fulfilled. The Lord Himself says it's fulfilled. And that's it. There's no point debating about this. It's a done deal. And there's a little color key over here. Prophecies more than 1,200 years before Jesus' birth. 
they highlight it in green, yellow, blue, and everything is done in a very good structured manner. Okay, let me get that in focus. All right. The next page will be prophecies dealing with the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So prophecy be a Passover sacrifice with no bone broken. Exodus Numbers talks about that. Everything that we need to understand about the prophetic and Bible prophecy regarding the Lord Jesus Christ, you will find lots of Old Testament references. It's not just in the New Testament. It was established in the Old Testament. Be hung upon a tree as a curse for us. Deuteronomy talks about that. And Galatians confirms its fulfillment. Again, the birth, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. A hundred prophecies fulfilled. And it goes on to the next page where it talks about the titles and the attributes of our Savior Jesus Christ. He says, um, Word of God says, I am Jehovah, the Old Testament reference, and the New Testament reference over here. A prophet like Moses, Old Testament reference, and a New Testament reference. So it goes on again. There's a color key, green, yellow, blue. Then it talks about, the book highlights and gives us this breakdown from the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the events in the life of Jesus. There's the birth, the childhood, ministry, baptism and ministry, very important, performs the first miracle at Cana, calls the disciples, heals, forgives, sermon on the mount, calms the storm, feeds the 5,000, plus extra, walks in water, the transfiguration, the heals the blind, lots of parables, and goes on till the end over here. And let me just get that right there. The Last Supper, what we call communion or the time of Passover, betrayed, suffers, dies on the cross, rises from the dead, appears to others, and ascends to heaven. So there's always going to be a little contention and questions. And again, I won't get much into it. If you do have doubts, I would encourage you to look online, but not really online, no. I would encourage you to ask your pastor or the church leader in your local church, in your local congregation, why some of the events are not recorded in all four Gospels. For example, we see the birth mentioned a lot in Matthew and Luke, Mark and John immediately goes into the ministry. Why? Why the miracle at Cana is not mentioned in Matthew, Mark and Luke, but John talks a lot about it. So if you have uh, questions and doubts, you can ask your pastor or another preacher or a leader. We can even get your answers online. So there, there's plenty of references for that. It talks about the miracles of Jesus. So many. The Lord was not just in word. He was not just preaching in word, but he was preaching in the demonstration and the power of the living God. So it always accompanies the word. Remember, power, signs, wonders, and miracles always accompany the word. And the Lord Jesus is the best example of that. And that's what he's passed on to us. Power over nature, healing, and um, raising the dead. He talks about Jairus' daughter, the widow's son, and Lazarus. Then he talks about all the parables of um, Jesus over here. Well, some of them would not be considered, personally, I do not consider the rich man and Lazarus as a parable because, um, all right, you know what, I'll just leave it at that. I'm sure most of you would probably understand why. It doesn't sound like a parable. It's something that actually did happen or it was a recorded event and the Lord Jesus spoke about it. You, you can understand that, that the way the Lord spoke about it was not really like a parable. So we won't get into the uh, theology behind it, but what Rose Publishing have done, just to make it easy for the sake of convenience, they have bunched up all the parables. So it'll be easy. Like I said, it's a good reference. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John's missing out on it. And uh, it would be a good reference for Bible study, for homeschooling, for small groups, and for preaching and teaching over here. Okay, let's get into this. Talks about the Beatitudes, what the Beatitudes mean. Uh, blessed are the poor, goes all the way to blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom. Then it talks about the 12 disciples. Who are the 12 disciples? Their background. They were 12 Jewish men. Please understand the disciples were Jews. They were not Christians. <laughs> And yes, we do know in some, in, in case somebody's all stuck up on race and skin color and uh, ethnicity, yes, we do know that the disciples, some of them were black also too. Fine. So again, 
Don't get stuck up on that. That's not important. Their purpose and their mission. So three things. We understand their background, why the Lord chose them for the purpose, and what was the mission given to them, not just during the time of Jesus' three and a half years of ministry, but after that. What was the purpose after that? The 12 tribes of Israel were blessed in the order to be a blessing to all nations. So they became a blessing to all nations. We have one of the disciples over here, Timothy, who came eventually to India. Praise God for that. So being a disciple of Christ, count the cost. Yes, there's a price to pay. You want to be a disciple of Christ or do you want to just be a regular church goer? There's a cost to pay, church. Be, be uh, aware of that. And um, it talks about fellowship, unity in the body of Christ. Not much of that going around these days, unfortunately. Christ and others, serving Christ and others. It's nice to serve others, but first you've got to serve Christ. You can't put others above Christ. Be very careful on that. People, a lot, uh, a lot what we see in churches today in ministries focus a lot on fellowship. You have to have fellowship with the Lord. Your fellowship has to be intimate with the Lord Jesus before it can be given out to others. Failures and forgiveness and in the power. Ooh, this is amazing. Praise God. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. There you go. All right, then it talks about the, the names, I'm not going to get much into it. Peter, the other uh, names are Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip over here. And goes all the way to Bartholome, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and the man himself, <laughs> the traitor, Judas Iscariot. Is it ironic today? It's kind of weird that actually people say Judas was the good guy and he did a favor. All right, let's just leave it at that. It's crazy, I know. So this book has it all. Other disciples in the New Testament we have, uh, they were followers. Some of them were apostles, evangelists, and teachers. Again, very good reference guide. I, I really enjoy, I like this. I really enjoy reading it, but this is very good, very encouraging, and very edifying, and good knowledge over here. So you could understand some of these leaders and followers of what was their role in the ministry that the Lord gave them as apostles, evangelists, teachers, and eventually as pastors, Timothy being one of them. Then he talks about the Lord's Prayer from Matthew 6 and for, from Luke 11. It uh, gives a breakdown of the prayer where it's about all about the Lord first. Remember, every prayer, anytime you start a prayer, direct it to the Lord first. Proclaim Him. Proclaim, declare, confess, just enjoy and just pour out your heart to him don't start saying i want this i want that give me this give me that and lead me into this no start saying start telling the father in heaven how much you love him start speaking to the lord jesus christ how much you love him and you want to adore him and worship him and glorify him and the sweet holy spirit will lead you and guide you at that then it breaks down into the lord and us then we go into herod's temple uh this was called the second temple not as grand as Solomon's temple. Herod wanted to appease the Jewish people and to have a good relationship with them, so he built his temple, put his name on it, and um, there it is with artistic illustration. Not really exactly exact to the detail. So it's a breakdown here, different parts of it. I won't go much into it because it doesn't exist anymore. It was, it's done with, it's over. Now they're going to be rebuilding the third temple, so keep an eye out for that. Palm Sunday to Easter. Uh, this is walking with Jesus each day. They use this a lot in, uh, in Roman Catholics for, I think, the seven steps. Yeah, the seven steps of Jesus or something like that. And it talks about the root and every stage of what the Lord Jesus went through. Evidence for the resurrection, beautiful reference guide. If you are not happy with what you are getting from church today or from any preacher or pastor about what's evidence, then you can find it right here. It's very simple. Whatever people say, the skeptics, objections, then you get the answers. Jesus did not die at the cross. You get the answers. Uh, the body was stolen. Of course they were going to say that. You get the answer. And everyone went to the wrong tomb. <laughs> okay, that was a new one. <laughs> and it talks about on Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus, uh, Peter addressed the crowd and specifically pointed out, and we get the four points, and that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit fell upon them as sons of fire. Hundred events from Acts to Revelation. The final words of Jesus before he was ascended to sit at the right hand of the Father, and all the way 
and I'm gonna go all the way to the end. Let's see where we are. Yeah. To the last part, John describes the new millennium, the final defeat of Satan, the great white throne judgment, and the new Jerusalem, together with the new heaven and the new earth. So don't fear. We got a new heaven and a new earth and a new Jerusalem coming. We're going to be reigning with our King and our Lord and Savior forever and ever and ever and ever. It goes on. The armor of God from Ephesians chapter 6, based on a Roman centurion, a Roman legionarium different aspects of the armor of God. Then he talks about 1 Corinthians 13. Uh, a lot of scholars call this, I, kind of, I agree with it, it's called the love chapter. I would say the whole book of 1 Corinthians, or the whole word of God is a love book, but this one specifically is a love chapter, what love is, and it's not just talking about love between a husband and wife, or an eros kind of love, it's talking about the agape love, the godly love that we should have. How to Love and the Scripture Reference based on 1 Corinthians. Again, everything we see in the New Testament is always interconnected. Don't ever think that, oh, I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 13. There's no reference or interconnection or no link to another scripture. It will always be there. It will be there even in the Old Testament. God's Word is true. It's final. It's perfect. Nothing has to be changed or even reformed in it. Fine. Fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5. Beautiful. And it also talks about Jesus' example of the fruit of the Spirit, what he said in the Gospels. And it talks about the bad fruit. Galatians chapter 5, 19 talks about the works of the flesh. What's happening today. Not just in the world, but even in the body of Christ. Sad. But it's meant to happen. That's exactly what Scripture says. It's going to get worse and worse. And this is the fruit of the Spirit that we should exhibit and show. It talks about the heroes of faith from Hebrews 11, and this was specifically for the Jewish people, the nation of Israel, and he talked about their heroes of faith all the way to Samuel. So it starts with the description and the Hebrew reference and other references. Then we come to the seven churches of Revelation. Okay, very, very amazing and important in modern day Turkey or Asia Minor. So we got Laodicea. Philadelphia, Ephesus, Smyrna, Thyatri, Thyatira, Pergamum, and uh, Sardis over here. And what's next? Yep. We talk about the seven letters, the seven angels, seven leaders, seven pastors, seven church ages. And to the church, it's loveless, their strengths, their faults, their instruction, their promise. Basically, a commendation or a condemnation that comes from Christ Jesus, as he told uh, John about this revelation. And Smyrna is called the Suffering Church, Pergamum, the uh, Worldly Church. And we come down here to, obviously, the last church age that we are, La Laodicea, the complacent church, complacency. That's what's happening. It's sad. It's sad. And they are no strength. You will notice that the Lord Jesus Christ does not commend the church, but calls out their faults. Neither hot nor cold, lukewarm. And the instruction, and he says, if you turn from indifference and repent, come back to me. Completely repent. Rent your heart, not just your garments, but rent your heart and your your mind and your body and your soul, everything, turn back to the Lord. The Lord says, I invite those who overcome to sit with me on my throne. All right. Then there's a background information. It goes on. Let me just get that in focus. Yeah. It talks about the churches and their background information over here. All right. Then we come to the full views of the end times, historical premillennialism, dispensationalism, premillennium, amillennium, and postmillennium. All right. Uh, let's just leave it at that. I'm not going to touch on that. If you haven't seen uh, the videos that my wife and I did previously about prophecy, Bible prophecy, Q&A, we got three parts, part one, part two, part three, and where we stand and what we believe in this. So you can go ahead and check that. And it talks about the four viewpoints of the end times, the last days, where physically will Jesus return? They all agree about the rapture, about the tribulation, if we're going to stay back, if there's going to be a literal 1,000-year millennium period, who's saved is the uh, modern state of Israel <laughs> relevant to the prophecies. Look at what the historical people say. No, no, no. No wonder there's so much anti-Semitism in the church today. 
with that garbage replacement theology teaching. This is what happens when they don't read the book of Romans and Hebrews and understand even what Daniel was talking about, the seven-year tribulation of Jacob's trouble. This is why we got many churches out there which hate the Jewish people and the nation of Israel. Sickening. It's sickening and it's disgusting. So glossary of end time words. Okay, there's a lot of end time words. Triple six, one forty four thousand. No, those are not Jehovah's Witnesses, according to their warped up, messed up theology. No, those are Jewish believers. Abomination of desolation, Antichrist, the Antichrist, and the spirit of Antichrist, which John talks about, which is prevalent today. Armageddon, uh, not the movie with Bruce Willis, no. <laughs> the actual battle, the final conflict. Babylon, right, yeah. Two beasts, church age, eschatology, that's the study of Bible teachings, Bible prophecy concerning end times. First coming of Christ, what we call Christmas, <laughs> wow, and the second coming, the bodily return of Jesus to earth to reign as a king in power and glory. Two witnesses, fine. So there's a lot of terminology. A lot of people don't even agree on this terminology and they don't want they don't like to even talk about it then we go to the biblical descriptions of heaven and hell there you go now we come to maps i won't take much time into this because there's a lot of maps it talks about the uh, 1040 window the 1040 window basically is where the gospel is being preached and the amount that's being reached now these maps obviously do change because this came out in 2021 we know that the gospel of salvation and there's so much happening revival in the middle east not just in israel but surrounding nations over here and we talk about the middle east and central asia uh again right here in india so much revival going on don't, don't believe what the news reports say and always stick to credible reliable sources middle east then and the middle east now so there's a lot of maps the holy land then and the holy land now okay the holy land which was a united kingdom not the other uk another godless nation now england wales scotland and ireland or whatever great britain completely completely an abomination apostasy shameful so what we see is the United Kingdom, the entire nation of Israel that became the divided kingdom, the northern and southern kingdom. You can read about that in First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, and Second Chronicles. And it talks about the expansion of the Assyrian Empire, which is modern day Syria, and it goes on to expansion of the Assyrian Empire again, how they expanded. It talks next we come to the Babylonian and Persian empires, how the Babylonians took over took the Jewish people as exiles and slavery and and used them over there in modern in Babylon which is modern day Iraq and then the Persian Empire which is modern day Iran and we have some fascinating facts and figures from the Middle East about the Garden of Eden where it could have been all the way down to uh, where Jonah went to northern Iraq Nineveh Daniel was kidnapped as a teenager and taken to Iraq, Babylon as a prisoner of war, basically as an exile. So, lots of interesting facts. Then we come to the New Testament time where Jesus walked. If you are going to Israel on a pilgrimage trip, that's exactly what tour guides will take you on. Where, they, where the Lord Jesus walked with his disciples, where Jesus walked now. So, again, it, it doesn't really matter. If you're going to go, maybe it does, but for the sake of time, I don't want to spend too much time on it. And the, um, okay, let me see if I can get this. The world of the first Christians, that's what it says. Then, how they spread out from Israel to Asia Minor, to Greece, and to the ends of the earth. And now, wow. Praise God for that. Okay. So, maps and maps. Then we talk about Paul's missionary journeys. The first one, the second one, the third one. And Paul's journey eventually to Rome where he was tried and executed. Then it talks gives you a breakdown so this will be a good again as a bible study reference and uh for small groups and for even preaching and teaching if you just want to get into paul's missionary journeys all right then we come to christianity cults and religions i won't get much into this rose publishing do have a separate booklet or a pamphlet just on this and you can get some pdf resources online so it talks about biblical christianity compared to Jehovah's Witness, Mormonism, Seventh-day Adventism, right? Very contentious. Uh, all of them say that they are the true Christians 
and they are the true religion. So again, we're going to have a lot of arguments. I'm not going to do that here, but I just want to show you what they are put in this book. The, the founders um, and the key writings. Let me just show that. Yeah. So we got key person, the founder, key writings. Uh, I won't say that Jesus Christ created or founded Christianity. That would be wrong to say that. He never came to establish Christianity. Never. He came to save us from our sins and make a way to heaven, make a way to have relationship with the Lord God Almighty, who is God to them, who is Jesus, who is the Holy Spirit, how to be saved, what happens after that, other facts, beliefs, and practices. So we see the JW, uh, the LDS, and the SDAs, what they all believe in. So I won't get into that. Then we look at the Unification Church, Christian Science, horrible, horrible. They're not even Christian in any way. Unity School of Christianity, don't know much about them. New Age Teaching, absolutely cultish, demonic. Wicca, demonic Scientology, one of the worst things ever. Worse, L. Ron Hubbard, communicated with demons. That's how we got it done. And uh, then he talks about Islam, the writings of Islam, what they perceive Christians to be, comparing Sunni and Shia Islam. There are denominations in Islam, and each one is trying to show that they, uh, they're the better. Then there's a nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, black Muslims. Yeah, there we go. Baha'i faith based in Israel, out of all places, a very controversial place. And according to Judaism, that would be considered uh, the religion of Abraham and what they believe in. And Kabbalah Center, Kabbalah, very, uh, oof, what would I say, occultic New Age Jewish mystical teachings. Dangerous stuff. Then he talks about Hinduism, what Hinduism is, how we compare Hinduism to Christianity. Uh, no founder. Then he talks about the uh, ISKCON movement and the TM, the meditation movement. He talks about Sikhism. Uh, yes, the ones who wear a turban and usually in the state of Punjab. And uh, they have the Golden Temple right here in India. Then Buddhism, again, uh, he came from India, Gautam Siddhartha, from a very rich family. And eventually Satnan and Tree, Enlightenment stuff. So Soka Gakkai, that's Japanese. Then he talks about Catholic Church denominations, Catholic Church, who was the founder. Catholics consider Peter to be the founder. All right, very debatable, and we know it's not true. Then he talks about the Orthodox Church from the time of Constantine. He talks about the Lutheran Church. Uh, Martin Luther, what can I say about him? I may have to do a video all about Martin Luther and the Reformers. They were not always perfect and the good guys. That's very important to understand. Anglican churches, uh, not much going on today in the UK with it. Presbyterian churches, that's Calvinism and Reformed theology. And Methodist churches, that's the Wesley Brothers. Anabaptist churches, uh, begins in Switzerland. And Congregational churches, pilgrims, the pilgrims, yeah, who left England to come to Massachusetts. The Baptist churches, from the Puritans, the churches of Christ, and the Pentecostal and Charismatic churches. Then we have different kinds of significant church bodies. All right, I don't want to get much into it. Then, it, then there's a family tree of denominations over here. Huh? Right, essential doctrines, what the Christians believe. So Rose Publishing ended by talking about essential doctrines and what the Christians believe, and there it is. Uh, who God is, who Jesus Christ is, Trinity, unity, uh, human sin, depravity, virgin birth, sinless, deity, humanity, atoning debt, bodily resurrection, ascension, intercession, and second coming. So it goes on, and it talks about uh, unity and the virgin birth and being sinful beings, that we need a savior. The Lord was sinless, 100% divine, 100% uh, human, Christ deity. Talks about humanity, the necessity of God's grace. It goes all the way to Christ's second coming. There you go. Then, inspiration of scripture, method of interpretation. And it talks about the Trinity and what other religious groups treat these essentials, like what do the LDS, the Jehovah's with the Scientology, Christian Science, SDA, what, what they consider as Christian, how do they treat this essential doctrines over here? 
very confusing to them. It, it just gets confusing. So many denominations. And it talks about the Trinity and why some people don't even believe in the Trinity at all. And there's a misunderstandings. It goes on and on. Misunderstandings of Trinity, uh, traits unique to God, and traits of Jesus Christ, the triune God. And it goes on and on because this is very important. Then it talks about, I'm not sure why Rose Publishing did this, why they decided to give a separate section for Islam and Christianity, religious history, who is God, how did they treat their holy scriptures or holy books, holy writings, and their prophets, right? So just as the Old Testament had prophets, um, even Islam has prophets also too. Old Testament warning and Christ warning about many self-proclaimed prophets coming out today. So there's a misunderstanding and correcting the misunderstandings. So it goes a lot into the practices and the rituals, the salvation and paradise, the role of women in each one religion and one considered a relation, as we call it, relationship in our religion as a Christian, religion and culture, how it, how it affects the world in terms of culture and society. And it gives a little do's and don'ts of reaching out to Muslims. And it gives a glossary of Islamic and Arabic terms. I'm not sure why they did it, but they, they probably had their reasons. You know, I didn't write, I didn't publish it, so they had their reasons. So we are done. That would be the last part of it. And we come to the index. Yep. All right, there you go. That's the map index. And that is the regular index. And it has in the end, like I said, they have... Uh, they have more Bible charts, Volume 2, Volume 3. There's a tabernacle. There's a guide to the temple. And it tells you the number of pages. There is uh, the Bible map atlas. There's another timeline over here. The Rose Book of Bible and History timelines. 6,000 years. And uh, we don't know how many pages that is. And it has a Jesus family tree. And it has a deluxe now and then, 30 pages of Bible 72 pages of Bible maps. Fine. So that's just a few of the best-selling books and reference books from Rose Publishing. They got a lot more. So I am done. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, watching part two. It's been over half an hour again. I just wanted to cover it. The reason I'm doing this is because if you are planning to buy this book, and it is pretty expensive right here in India. I don't know how much it costs uh, in your country, wherever you are in the world. But I would definitely recommend getting it if you can get a discount or a good price on it, or even a used edition. The reason I'm doing it is because you get to understand what's in the book before you commit to it. And I never found any video right now on YouTube where somebody's actually taken the book out and gone page by page and to give you a quick overview. It's just, that's why I had to do this two-part video here. So have a blessed day in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Keep looking up. Always end up your prayer with Maranatha. Even so, come soon, Lord Jesus, for your church this day. And I pray and hope that you and your family be safe from every attack of the enemy, and the Lord's hand will always rest upon you and your loved ones. So have a blessed day, and please uh, share this video, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and if you have any comments, let me know, and I have a lot more book reviews coming. So look into the Rose Book of Bible Charts, Maps, and Timelines. God bless. Shalom.